Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Fallon. Welcome to Dental Excellence. And with this series of videos, my idea is to create a series of shorter 10 to 15 minute or less videos where I'll present one or two clinical techniques or tips or perhaps a case that I'm working on in my practice, a short version of a case that I'm working on in my practice, and just kind of get the word out across the various clinical or various uh, social media platforms like Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube, uh, maybe even my blog. I'm planning to post these videos on my blog. And then ultimately I'd like to create a podcast for these videos. And ultimately my goal here is to get the word out about one of my core beliefs in dentistry and dental education. And that is that beautiful and precise dentistry you know, beautiful dentistry with precise fit and occlusion is not just for the gurus. You know, I say this all the time, but I truly believe this, that uh, if you're watching online videos about dentistry, you know, you can do this kind of dentistry also because you're investing your time and effort in online education. So, you know, ultimately the next step is just having the patients come into your practice or having the patients in your practice understand that you can do this kind of dentistry for them. And so this series of videos is meant to help inspire people about what they can do in their practice and just see what we're doing in my practice because I have a pretty much everyday full-time clinical practice, but I'm good at documenting cases. So because I like to take a lot of photos and videos and I document my cases, I can share what kind of dentistry can be done in an everyday practice. So for this particular video, kind of my launch of dental excellence, I'd like to share with you a case that I've posted onto Facebook and talked about a couple of times. And it's basically a, a veneer case and it illustrates another concept that uh, I believe in my practice and that's I'm dedicated to creating long-term results for my patients. So wherever possible, long-term clinical results. And we'll talk about this a lot in our dental excellence videos. And if you look at this particular patient, these are photographs I, I shot in September. And this patient uh, had four porcelain veneers uh, placed by me. And these are the 10-year post-op photographs for this case. So 10 years post-op. And when I posted these on Facebook, people thought it was amazing to have such wonderful results after 10 years. And I'll tell you again, you know, this is, this is what we can do in everyday practice. You know, this is not just for the gurus. This is what we can do with good lab support, good clinical techniques, and, um, and, and really great planning and thought about how to design the occlusion. So here's a couple of other views. You know, you can see the tissue looks good because we've had proper uh, management of the tissue, the restorative tissue interface at the time that I placed the veneers, meaning I removed any excess cement that was kind of all over the margins and I polished it properly and I had a good interface for the tissue to adapt to. The patient's done his part by keeping his teeth nice and clean, coming in for really regular maintenance, flossing, and obviously just having a good overall starting position or condition of his tissue to allow this kind of result to happen. If you look at the preparations, this is a primary key that I talk about in all of my training programs when we discuss porcelain veneers. And that is that you wanna prepare the case to leave the majority of enamel on the tooth. <laughs> you know, I don't want the majority of the enamel disintegrated into vapor. I want the majority of the enamel left on the tooth so that then I could bond my restorations to a preparation surface that's almost all enamel. And if you can do this, you'll have very, very few veneers debond even at the 10 year mark, even maybe at the 15 year mark, you know? Um, if you can do this, you can get really great long-term success for your patients. The mistake I see is, is patients coming in telling me they had veneers and they're falling off. And the thing that they have is three-quarter crown preps. It's not veneers, it's three-quarter crown preps. You know, the facial enamel has all been prepared and the interproximal uh, reduction has been completed to blast through the contact. So if you do that, you have much less enamel to bond to clearly. 
And the dentin bond, despite all the great adhesives we have, degrades at a much faster rate than the enamel bond. So at the 5 to 10 to 15 year mark, you start seeing these debonding in mass. So not fracturing, just debonding. And then you have to try and rebond them, but it's all kind of a mess and it's hard to reattach to uh, dentin. I've had a couple of patients come in with old veneers in their hands that were treated somewhere else. And, you know, I basically rebonded them, but I told them, you know, I don't know how long this will last. So my primary goal when I'm teaching and talking about porcelain veneers is to leave as much enamel as possible. And if you look through the dental literature, that's echoed through a lot of different uh, research papers, retrospective papers, longevity papers, etc. But the main goal is leave as much enamel as possible. That's something I really like to try and drive home. And wherever possible, when I'm treating a veneer case, that's what I do. Now, there are some cases where the patient probably should have had orthodontics. They refuse orthodontics. And you might have one area or one tooth in the arch that was out of place and should have been treated orthodontically where you've prepped the veneer more aggressively than you'd like to. And it's more like a three quarter crown. So what I frequently do in those cases is I'll have, for example, six veneers being placed, but one of the teeth that's really out of alignment, instead of a three quarter veneer, I'll make that a jacket crown just because I know that we've removed more enamel than I'm comfortable with. So I'm just going to wrap it around the palatal or lingual and make that particular restoration a jacket crown just to try and prevent this debonding problem. And then the rest of the teeth, if the alignment allows, will be prepared as, as a conservative porcelain veneer case. So if you look at uh, this particular case for Ross, you can see his starting condition. And when we started, his teeth were not in great alignment and the one lateral incisor was really kind of sticking out labially and I would have had to really over prepare that tooth to get it into alignment. So my suggestion to Rost was what I have suggested to most of the cases that come through the practice is do orthodontics first. And he didn't want to have, um, he didn't want to have braces per se, traditional orthodontics, but he did agree to Invisalign. So with Invisalign, we were able to bring the lateral incisor in and level the lower incisors much better so that at the insert appointment, I could just equilibrate those lower incisors and level them a little bit with some XT discs, some polishing discs, as opposed to a fairly aggressive enamel plasty that would be needed if they were left as they are here. So you can see here with the Invisalign, I was able to line up the lower incisors quite nicely and then just enamel plasty them a little bit to have a better, a better contacting surface for my new incisal edge position of my upper porcelain veneers. And so that's another key tip is you need to set up the opposing arch when you're doing porcelain veneers so that it's going to work with the new incisal edge position in a protrusive and lateral guidance uh, relationship. So often you either have to do orthodontics veneers on the lower incisors and cuspids or enamel plasty, different levels of enamel plasty. And uh, my tip to you is you should explain this to the patient at the consultation appointment, not after the uh, veneers are placed. Because if you start grinding on the lower incisors after the veneers are placed, typically the patient's going to wonder what you did wrong and why are you grinding on my good teeth at the bottom. But when you tell them at the consultation appointment, they understand that it's part of the process. So those are just tips that I would have for you. Here's Ross finished. Uh, these probably were taken around the five year mark, these photos. And here he is when he began. Again, didn't like his lower incisors either, but I felt that we could improve those just with Invisalign and reshaping. The upper incisors, he had a diastema with composite resin between it, in the, uh, between the centrals. And then he just didn't like the triangular tooth shape that he had with those teeth. So we wanted to change them to a fuller tooth shape and we did that with conservative porcelain veneer restorations. So another lateral view, you can see the aesthetic integration of the porcelain into the surrounding dentition. We have good surface anatomy, surface luster, as well as shade, as well as shade and value. And just another view. 
This view illustrates a point that I like to make, and that's the veneers shouldn't go kind of protrusively. You shouldn't have incisors that have the facial edge going to the incisal edge in kind of a, in a, a facial protrusive kind of uh, surface. You want it to curve in a little bit. If you look at these incisal edges, they curve in it slightly. And I actually had a patient in this week we were completing a functional analysis for. Um, she was referred by another dentist, uh, doesn't like her, uh, doesn't like anything in her mouth. She has like different restorative dentistry done at different times throughout the mouth. It's basically gonna be a full mouth rehabilitation, but her primary concern aesthetically is her upper bridge. The teeth go really kind of out on an angle and they don't curve back in on the incisal third. So, you know, that's a fairly easy fix. As long as we can find the room occlusally to do that, uh, that's a pretty effective and easy fix for me to give her what she looks, what she's looking for is her primary concern, what she's looking for uh, resolving. <laughs> so at the three year post treatment, these are the photos, just to show you some photos as we went through the post treatment series with this patient, I took these photos, everything looked great then. Lateral views, tissue looks great. Uh, I, I love the surface anatomy and luster on these restorations. They really mimic that adjacent cuspid, really mimics the adjacent cuspid. And the translucency, a lot of subtle aesthetic characterizations in this case that really make it a winner and look natural. And then the tenure post-treatment. And you know, the tissues uh, may be a little uneven, a little uneven, uh, but overall I think it looks, it looks pretty darn good at 10 years. Just another view of the 10 year. And I actually videotaped the entire preparation and bonding of this case, which is kind of neat that I have all of the documentation from this case 10 years ago that I videotaped and edited and made into a series of DVDs as well as added to my online occlusion design membership site. So in the fifth module of occlusion design, I go through the preparation of this case in detail, just all the prep videos. And then in the sixth module, I show bonding in this case. So if you're an occlusion design member watching this, just go back, watch module five and six and keep this case in mind because it shows what I'm teaching in module five and six on that particular case videos. You know, this has long-term post-operative results for that. Uh, from the teaching aspect 10 years ago, filmed in the dental microscope, the Zeiss dental microscope, all the way to the post-ops now. So it's, it's good to have that kind of uh, proof, proof of principle, so to speak, of all the different subtle uh, aspects of the preparations as well as the bonding in of the case. And we posted this, as I said, to Facebook. I had a really great response. We posted it on the Phelan Dental Seminars Facebook page. And I believe I posted it on the Dr. Stephen Phelan Facebook page as well. We had lots of likes. Um, looks like we had 140 something likes. 29 different comments, a lot of engagement with these kind of posts on Facebook and three different shares where people were sharing it with their own page or their own profile to say, uh, I look at some of these and people say things like, oh, this is what I really want, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to share with their friends, to share with their friends. And it's, it's typically uh, the shares are frequently on my Dr. Stephen Phelan page by patients. And as I said, saying, this is what I'd like to see uh, for my mouth. So that's video number one for dental excellence. And if you enjoyed this video, by all means, leave a comment or question below the video, whether that's on my blog, on YouTube, on Facebook, or hit the Facebook like button or on LinkedIn. I'm basically planning to post this video, this video series, as I said, on, a, a various, on the various social media platforms that I have a profile with. And I'm gonna do my best to answer any questions. If um, you didn't have your question answered, maybe post it on my blog. That's probably the central point where I'll answer most of the questions, the failindentalseminars.com blog page. And 
and you know that's that's basically it so i hope you enjoyed video number one for dental excellence and i just want to remind you you can do this kind of dentistry beautiful and precise dentistry with precise fit and occlusion is not just for the gurus so thank you very much